The potato side dish is one of life's simple pleasures, perfect for rounding out a wide range of meals from breakfast platters to steak dinners. And these crispy smashed fingerling potatoes might just be my favorite of all time. They're essentially steak fries on steroids, satisfying the craving for both a crunchy French fry and a creamy baked potato. The best part is that they're pretty easy to make, and you can actually do most of the time-consuming prep for them in advance during your weekly meal prep. The cooking process for this recipe occurs in two steps. First, the potatoes are boiled whole, and second, they are crisped up either by frying or baking them. For step one, combine one pound fingerling potatoes in a pot with two quarts of cold water, two and a half tablespoons diamond crystal kosher salt, two tablespoons red wine or other vinegar of your choosing, an optional few cloves of garlic and herbs of your choice, and bring the whole thing up to a boil on high heat, reducing it to a simmer just as it begins to boil. Adding the vinegar not only provides flavor, but also helps the potatoes to retain their shape. That's because the glue that keeps a potato's cells held together, pectin, breaks down slower in an acidic environment. I've got a whole video on potato science stuff I'll link below if you're interested to learn more. When the potatoes just become fork tender and are 90% of the way cooked, about six to eight minutes after they reach a boil, kill the heat and allow the whole pot to cool down to room temperature. Because they're going to keep cooking as they cool, it's important to not overcook the potatoes before you turn that heat off. At this point, you can simply store them along with their cooking liquid in your fridge until you're ready to actually cook them up and eat them. The salt and vinegar in the cooking liquid will easily keep the potatoes good all week, and they won't get that sort of like gross, dried out texture leftover roasted potatoes get when you store them in your fridge. For the crisping step, you've got two options the faster but more hands-on frying method, and the slower but hands-off baking method. First, let's tackle frying. Partially crush your potatoes by gently pressing on them with the heel of your hand until they flatten out a little bit and develop these little cracks and crannies that are primed for crispy goodness. Pour enough oil to fill a heavy bottom pot or skillet with a quarter inch of oil and heat over medium high heat until shimmering. Carefully lay your potatoes in the pan, being mindful not to overcrowd them. Then cook them until the first side is crispy, about one to two minutes, then flip them over and crisp the other side. Once finished, immediately toss them with some salt to taste and add any other spices or herbs you want. I'm partial to some lemon zest and parsley myself. Next, let's talk about the oven method. First, preheat your oven to 450 degrees and smash those potatoes again. While the oven comes up to that temperature, I like to make a garlic rosemary butter to cook the potatoes in. Combine three tablespoons of chopped rosemary, three minced garlic cloves, a few cranks of ground black pepper, and a stick of butter in a small saucepan, heating over medium low until the garlic just begins to turn golden. Strain the butter and carefully coat the smashed potatoes, setting aside those aromatics to use later. Place the buttery spuds on a baking sheet, being mindful again not to overcrowd them, and roast without moving them for 15 to 20 minutes. Then take a spatula, preferably a flexible fish spatula like this, and flip the potatoes, roasting for about 20 more minutes or until crispy and golden brown all over, stirring them and flipping them occasionally. Once finished, immediately toss them with some salt to taste, along with the garlic herb mixture we set aside earlier. Both of these methods will yield the crispy, creamy potatoes of your dreams, so just use whichever works best for the time frame of the meal you're cooking. So we all know food has this ability to sort of transport you to another place in time or in your life, just jog certain memories. Um, and these are one of those foods that really does it for me. Um, whenever I eat them, I always think back to when I was a line cook. Um, and these were one of my go-to snacks after like a really brutal service on a Friday night, you know, maybe in the summer, sweating, you know, after a job well done, I'd chuck a couple of potatoes in the fryer and then uh, bring them downstairs to um, the bar and I'd have my shift drink, maybe a beer, some whiskey, and uh, eat these dipped in some sour cream. 
Um, and yeah, I just love them. They're great. They're super tasty. I make them all the time. Uh, so anyway, that's going to do it for me. Uh, you know, if you like the video, please consider subscribing. Uh, it really helps me out and I would appreciate it. Um, yeah, until next time. Later, nerds. Crash Coast, Crash Coast Kitchen. Crash Coast, Crash Coast Kitchen. It's hard to say, so I